what I'm making is a box that has sliding dovetails in the leg. So the, the post, the dovetail part becomes the leg. So in each of these legs, I'm cutting a, a groove in there for each of the box sides. So I want a piece, so let's, let's see, my, my box sides are half inch. So whatever, you, whatever your side you want to pick, okay, that's going to be my side. I'm, I'm using a 3 8 dovetail bit, so 3 8 inch wide. So I've got to keep, then I've got to factor in what's the size of my box and what's the size of my leg. So my boxes are going to be a half inch wide. So then I've got to figure that my leg stock needs to be twice that. So if my, if my boxes are half, then this needs to be a one inch square leg. The reason for that is because you need to be able to have room for the dovetail so sockets without them overlapping and collapsing on each other. So as you saw with that square, with the top of the leg view here, what we're going to do is we're going to cut. We're going to cut a, a dovetail slot in this face and in this face, down, down the length of it. And you don't want to get them so close together that this little tiny neck here becomes a weak point and breaks off. So you've got to have some mass right here in the middle of this neck. And so to do that, the way I do that is to have my stock twice the width. So if I can do that, I need to have... Now, if you're going to use a wider dovetail bit, then your sock needs to be even that much wider. So I'm using a 3 8 inch wide bit, which means it's 3 8 inch at the, at the widest point of the slot, at the, at the tip of it. That's going to be 3 eighths inches wide. And I'm only going to go a quarter of an inch deep on this because I don't need a lot of reference. I just need it to get in there and lock. It'll make a good locking uh, joint. So what I do is make up two blanks. In this case, walnut, just one inch square. And I'm going to cut one on each end. And then after I get my slots cut, then I'll cut them to length because I don't want to work with four inch long pieces. I want to work with a longer piece that I can control better. So I've got my... 3 8 inch dovetail bit in the router table. If anybody wants to know anything on router lifts, this is my favorite lift, GSM. It's the Mast R lift, they call it, Master Lift. It's my favorite router lift, best one on the market. So if you're looking to buy one, that's the one to get. GSM, J E S S E M, Master Lift. The second best one on the market is the other Jessim model. So now I'm going to be, I'm not going to be needing to use the fence opening. So I want to close that down. So in this case, I need to, because I'm going to be running stock, the, the fence is going to be behind the bit. So it's not going to be captured in there. I want to close these together. Okay. So I know I'm not going to get into the bit because my fence is going to be back a ways. So what I want to do is I want to set my bit height for a quarter of an inch. You don't need a router lift for this, but it sure makes it easier. Okay, so now I want to set the fence to whatever my layout marks. I didn't lay this out, but I'll just kind of give you. So you want to figure that where you want to do this. You want it pretty close to the edge, but not so close to it again that it's going to be weak and break off. So you want that about a, a good eighth of an inch to three sixteenths is pretty close there. And I'll, I'll just make a light cut and show you kind of what I mean. I'll just make a little quick cut and show you just a, just a bump cut here. And since this is a really small bit, I want to run it pretty fast. So I've got it running about 22, 22,000, something like that. So you can zoom in on that. So you can see how close I am to the edge, about an eighth of an inch from the edge. So what I'm going to do is to make one slot here, flip it around and make one here, then I'm going to do the same on this piece. So I'm going to make all four legs at one time, one slot at a time though. So now I want to say, okay, my, the other thing is my box sides are three and a quarter inches tall. So I've got to make then, my slot has to be three and a quarter inches long or roughly there about, you know, so it can't be any more than that because then it'll show. But I don't want it to be f that fully long, so I'm going to make it just a little bit less because with the round at the bottom of the slot, it's rounded, and I'm going to have a square piece. So rather than have to round off the tail on this, I'm just going to make it a quarter of an inch shorter. 
so that my slot is a little bit longer, and then I'll show you how to cut that off here in a little bit. Um, so then I'm gonna make, in this case, these legs are four and a quarter, so I'm gonna make the legs longer. I'll cut them off afterward, because I'll have plenty of length. So I wanna set my slot. I'm just gonna use any kind of stop. You can set a clamp stop, whatever. You wanna set a stop past the bit. Since my box sides were three and a quarter, and I wanna stop a quarter short, that'll be three inches. So I wanna cut a three inch long slot. There we go. Okay. So let's go ahead and make that. And because this is kind of a, a tight thing, I don't want to back up out of that. So I'm going to get to the end. I'm going to shut it off and let the bit stop before I pull it back. Because I don't want to stress that bit any at all. It's a, this one has a quarter inch shank, so it's, a pretty, it's narrow down at the neck. I don't want to break that bit off. You, so we'll see here. You'll see what I'm talking about. You're all right, as long as you don't move, just let it, let it coast to a stop. And there it goes, then I can slide back. Now I'm gonna come around, shoot one from the other end. And when that bit first grabs, it wants to kind of pull a little bit, so keep, your, keep good firm grip on your piece. Push down and against the fence. You don't want that to get away from you. Love this gripper push block. That's a fantastic tool. Hopefully somebody won those. I know they gave, we gave some away there. So now I have two slots here cut. So I'm going to do my other piece. And again, if, you're, if you've already determined what your good fa faces are, then you want to, obviously you're cutting on the inside of this. So let's say you've marked your faces. You don't want to cut on those two outer faces. So cut the other two. Okay, so now I've got one slot cut for all four legs. Now I want to go, and I'm gonna put another slot then on this face, so I have to move my fence over. I don't wanna move my stop. Keep the stop right where it is, because that's gonna, that needs to stay the same. But now I wanna to go to where, and you have to use your, just use your ruler or eyeball, whatever you think is good, but you wanna be an eighth inch now from the outer edge to the bit. Pretty good. So now we'll just route the others again. And in this case, always take the one slot that you've just routed and put that against the fence. Okay, so now I have two slots there. I have my, that's one leg. So now on my other, I wanna put that against the fence and I'll route it as well.
to in interest of time, I won't do the other leg. I'll just kind of go through the process then to show you. So you would do the same for the other blank so that you would have two pieces like this, get them both set up here. Now what you want to do then is to come back and cross cut your pieces to whatever length you want. So, and I won't do it here because I've, I've got a rip blade in, but so let's say you wanted to do these at four and a quarter, you wanted an inch longer than the box width. So may, let's say you do that, just simply cross cut these at four and a quarter or whatever length you want to do and just cut those off and that becomes your, your leg then. For the purpose of this, I'll, I'll go ahead and show you then how to do the sides. So my, my box sides then will register just like this in the leg blank. So what I need to do is to cut a tail on here. So what I want to get this now is I don't want to change the, the bit set up at all. I don't want to change the height of it. Leave the bit exactly the same as it is. Same bit, same height. Don't mess with that. But I do need to house it inside the fence a little bit. So I need my screwdriver. So I need to open up the fence a little and just put it back in there because I'm only going to make a partial cut on these. And I want this up real snug on the bit. I, wanna, I don't want it to get in there zero clearance because I'm not, I don't want to cut into my fence, but I want to be right up next to it, right up close without cutting into it. So now I know that my stock is half inch wide and my slot was only three eighths. So I know I'm going to have to take about a 16th inch off to get that to go. So what I want to do is I'm going to use my scrap piece here, which is the same, same thickness. So I'm working from there. I just want to kind of start shaving. I'm going to sneak up on this. I don't want to get it too much. So we're going to just sneak up on the cut a little bit. We're going to cut both sides. So I'm going to use my block and just hold this in here, hold it up good flat against there, and then you want to keep it flat on the table. So you want as much support as possible you can get here. get that out of the way. I was kind of catching myself on that. So I'm starting to get there. I'm not quite. So I want to move the fence a little bit away from here. Just move it away from the bit. And again, I just want to sneak up on this. So you're making a pass on each side, so you're removing equal amounts so this, this tail will be centered. And what I want to do then is to just see how I'm getting, and I've got a little bit of ways to go. I should do a little less sneaking here to get you guys. So now, as you can see, I'm getting closer and just keep doing a test fit. I'm real close there now. Because once you make those undercut, you can't, you can't go back and add on to it. So you don't want them to be too, you want a good snug fit. One of the things I'm seeing, I forgot to get a smaller reducer. So what I really need on my, is a reducing ring that'll close up around that bit. Because what I'm doing is with that opening that I've got, I'm wanting to, it's wanting to fall down in there a little bit. So don't do that when you're doing, get, a, get the tightest reducing ring you can around the bit. So now just test your fit and I'm pretty close. 
There you go. So there's my thing. But you can see I'm a quarter of an inch. I got it too snug. Now I can't get it out of there. I want my piece to cover that up. So I'm supposed to be a quarter of an inch longer down here. So what I'm going to do is nibble off a quarter of an inch off of this dovetail. Okay, so I'm going to want to take a quarter of an inch off. So what I want to do is set my blade height for a quarter of an inch. So I got my height set that I want to take off. I also want to take off no more than that. So I want to measure how far it is. It's a quarter of an inch that way, the length of my tenon. So I want to take off a quarter of an inch here. So I want to set my fence. so that I'm measuring to this side of the blade over here, including the kerf of the blade plus an eighth of an inch. And then what I'm going to do is just nibble off that little bit. I'll take this off. So just by making that little notch, and I'm a little bit off, so I just slide my fence over a little more, make that notch. Then when I slide it down into here, which I know is going to be tight, and then that'll slide down, it'll, and it can bottom out in that slot, or you can put it however you want. You can round it off if you want to, but then it will fit snug to the top of your thing, to your leg, and now you've got a nice sliding dovetail fit. So do all four legs once you get your router bit set, the fence set to the right depth, do all four box sides on each of those, and then you just put your box together, and then you've got your nice dovetailed box. Now, the one thing is, because of that setup, you have this little kind of an offset here. You've got a, 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 a corner sticking out inside the box, so the, and you've got no way that you can build, because this is a sliding thing, you can't put a slot in the bottom, in for a bottom, and then put it in at pre-assembly or during assembly. So, because in order to slide these down, you can't do then also a horizontal movement. So the, the only answer for putting a bottom into the box is to do it afterward. So go ahead and assemble your box, glue it together, put your, uh, sand your pieces again by hand, get them all sanded together. And when you're gluing, because you've got cross grain, you don't want to have this, this grain runs this way and this one's running that way. So because you're going to have it, you've got a, you've got a real disaster potential there to, to break apart on you. So what you want to do then is only glue no more than half the thickness, half the width of your board, of your sideboard. So what I did was put a, a drop of glue in the slot right here in the center, just a little bit of glue, not much at all. It doesn't take much because this isn't going anywhere. It's not going to fall apart on you. A little bit of glue will hold this just fine. So that when I put the glue right in the center and then I put this in and slide it down, so what that does is it glues it from, from the center to the bottom of the slot. Yeah, nothing at the top. Now, you could, you could also then, and what that does is it means that so the bottom half is going to stay glued. It's not going to move. The top half, if there's any shrinking, will come, or any swelling, I mean, will come out the top of the leg, maybe a little bit. You're not going to see much over a three-inch three inch piece, so you might see a sixteenth of an inch. It's not going to be a lot. Uh, but if you didn't want to have that coming out the top of the leg, what you could do is put a little dab of glue just up here on the end of the tenon, not, on the, not in the slot, but on the tenon, on each side of the tenon, so that it's going in. And then when you put it in here and slide it down, the only part that's going to be glued is going to be this inch or so up here at the top. And that way then it would allow it to expand into the bottom. And because we cut that notch out, we've allowed for that. So you can do it either way. Um, I've, I've done it both ways. I haven't had enough time to find out for sure which way is going to work best. Um, I don't suspect it would be a real issue. The worst thing you can do, though, is to glue the whole tenon, the whole length of that slot. You don't want to glue this thing into wherever it is because, again, it's, it's captured. You've got four pieces going around into this. It's all captured and glued together. You're not, it's not going anywhere, so you don't have to. This isn't something you're worrying about sideways forces pulling it apart. This is just going to be, it's got that mechanical advantage of a, of a dovetail joint. And then if you want a little bit, you can play around with this. You can make uh, thicker legs if you want. You can make them so that you've got a little bit more of a shoulder. Um, on this box, I've got about an eighth of an inch shoulder. So you, you know, out here, it gives you a little more shadow effect. Um, you can do any number of things. I just cut a little chamfer on the bottom side to just kind of lighten the look of it a little bit. 
Um, I also beveled, just chamfered this little outer corner on this box. I've got another one that I didn't do that. Just similar little things. So play around with it. And to get the bottom in here, after you've glued this together, then I come back and I just glue some cleats on the inside of the, of the side walls just to put that, to, just to capture the bottom. So just, just glue some cleats on there. There's no fasteners or anything, just glue those on. And then I just cut a piece of plywood to fit the bottom, including, the, including notching it for these legs. And then just simply set it in and glue it in place. You don't need to worry about con expansion or contraction on the box bottom. I've got it in there pretty snug. Um, you gotta have it. It's, pl it's plywood. I mean, it's gonna, it might be a little bit, but it's not, gonna, it's not gonna blow it apart or anything. You're not gonna have it crack and come apart because again, any, any little bit of sideways force is minimal. It's not gonna be a big issue with that because most of the shrinking and swelling in this is going to be vertically up and down. So the plywood should move with it. Um, and then just make a lid and whatever, just any little fancy th stuff um, that you could end up then with a box like that.